think we can all agree that Super Mario World is an amazing game. Actually, scratch that. This is the internet, and no one can agree on anything. But I think it's an amazing game, and I know at least a crap ton of you agree with that statement. But did you know that Super Mario World almost got a quote-unquote sequel for everyone's favorite console, the Philips CDI? Ha <laughs> ha! Here's the problem. Too many toasters! No! Oh, God no, not that. It was a title that held a lot of promise, but unfortunately never saw the light of day. So today on Gaming Mysteries, I'll be talking about Super Mario's Wacky Worlds, a presumably wacky game. Zany! Now Super Mario's Wacky Worlds was to be a sequel type thing to the original Super Mario World and was to be developed by Nova Logic, a company looking to be hired by Nintendo. The idea of the game emerged when Philips was helping with the SNES CD, a disk drive for the SNES. I seem to talk about disk drives a lot. Anyways, during this time period, Philips had the rights to make games based on Nintendo franchises on their own CDI system, which we of course know all about. I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! Not now! Maybe later. It was then suggested to Nova Logic by a Nintendo sales executive that they port some simple Super Nintendo games to the CDI, which sparked the idea of a sequel to Super Mario World. The developers, whose names I will probably mispronounce, Silas Warner and John Brooks, were selected as the game's designers and apparently worked 24 hours a day for two weeks on Wacky Worlds, finishing part of a level that they would then present to Nintendo. The two developers were very enthusiastic about making a more traditional Mario game as, well, look at all the other Nintendo-based games on the CDI. They kinda sucked. So these guys wanted to prove that they could make a good game, and Nintendo was actually impressed with what they saw, but... Due to the CDI's poor sales, the project was cancelled, and this is a shame because the game definitely held some promise. The title, based off of various pre-alpha footage, seems like it would have been just like Super Mario World, but instead of being set in the Mushroom Kingdom, it would be set in various real-world earthly locales, like Greece and Egypt, and some original ones as well, though I've yet to figure out what's so damn wacky about the game. Nothing is wacky about the Earth, you guys. Well, actually. The Earth is pretty fucking wacky now that I think about it. Good call on the name, you guys. The game would have presumably played similarly to Super Mario World, as you can see from this various early footage, though as it's only pre-alpha stuff, a lot of things such as power-ups or certain abilities or the game working correctly hadn't been implemented yet. Though one would assume that these things would have had development continued. But yes, the gameplay is very Super Mario World-ish, minus the Mushroom Kingdom thing, I guess. You would progress through stages, killing poor defenseless enemies in real-world locales to get to the end of the stage. Basically, it's like Grand Theft Auto, without cars. And guns. And guns. Though the game would be held back due to the limitations of the CDI. The title wouldn't have been able to make use of large numbers of sprites on screen, Mode 7, and various visual effects. But on the upside, it used Super Mario World's music, so that's awesome. The team also had issues accurately capturing the sprites from Super Mario World as the CDI had a different sprite making style than the SNES, so to make it work they had to pirate their designs from Super Mario World, which led to them producing their own Mario as well as several Koopa Troopa sprite variations and a creation of their own. Of course, all this work would be for naught seeing as how the project was canned. Now there is actually ROMs of the pre-alpha version of this title circulating on the interwebs for those of you interested, and a lot of people who have played it think that the game is shit and broken. To which I just have to say, what the fuck did you expect from a game in its pre-alpha stage? It's not complete. I can't help but think it's a little unfair to condemn a game like that in its unfinished form. Now, if it had seen a retail release and still been broken as all hell, then that would be one thing, but the title was never finished so it didn't get the polish your retail release would presumably see, and hell, I doubt the developers even expected it to be leaked on the internet for you guys to play in the first place, so I don't see why the game gets all the hate. But that's all I want to say about Super Mario's Wacky Worlds. I do honestly think that had this game been completed, we could have had at least one good Nintendo-based game on the CDI. The title did look very promising, and hell, even Nintendo was impressed with what these guys were doing, so they had to have been onto something. That's not to say one good or great game based on Mario would have saved the CDI and made it super popular, but we could have at least had that one good or great Mario game to look back on, and that's better than nothing. And by nothing, I mean Hotel Mario. You know what they say. All toasters, toast, toast. Well said, Mario. Well said. 
never speak again. This has been Gaming Mysteries. Thanks for watching.